Hey everyone, it's Byron. I'm here to testify for Jesus Christ. I'm going to talk about some things that are hard to be heard. But I think it's going to be helpful to consider this going into the end times. Okay, When you prepare for a competition, you don't just perform the competition. Like for example, if a football team plays on Sundays, that's their game. That's their competition. But they don't play five other games Monday through Friday or Monday through Saturday. What they do is they have certain drills they do to prepare them to put it together for a whole game. Um, a marathoner will eat right, sleep right, do short workouts, do long workouts, etc. Um, <clears throat> and you can do, you can, can make up drills for each competitive competition that you might imagine. Um, when you're looking at training for the end times, there's a there's probably a natural tendency to want to hear the next greatest thing somebody's saying about the end time. And that's understandable. But hearing about an end time something and knowing about it, let's say, for example, you know a game's coming up and it's coming up on Saturday. Um, and today is Monday. Hearing about what's going to happen on Saturday can change some of the things that you do on Monday, but it shouldn't change everything that you do on Monday. So we need to keep our, our focus on what are the things that I need to do um, to be prepared for the game or that fourth quarter I've referred to in the past. That's, that's what I'm trying to uh, get a focus on. Now, one of the things that I think is critical is if we get our minds right. Some people say, uh, for a game, hey, get your mind in the game or get your head in the game. We got to we got to get our focus. Well, in preparation, we don't necessarily have to get our head in the game, which is still like Saturday. But we need to get our focus on the things that we need to do or the building blocks that are necessary for the game. OK, so today I just want to talk about the one little building block that I consider to be critical, probably most important of any building block. And that is getting your mind on the right things. Um, you know, there's all kinds of people out here doing drama. Oh, this is happening. This is happening. Oh, this is happening. This is happening. That's not where our minds need to be. Maybe we can hear about that. Maybe we can't. But we need to have our minds right. And how do we get our minds focused on the right things? And I just want to talk about um, a couple different words in the English language that will help you understand what I'm trying to say. One word is supposition. Um, I've written some definitions down here. A, suppos a supposition, briefly defined, it's an imagination. It's a belief without evidence. Some of us have beliefs, and they're very strongly held beliefs. But if we were to literally compare it to the rest of the information that's out there, we might realize there's no evidence to support what I believe. And I don't mean that not necessarily directed you. I have suppositions as well. But a supposition is so strong that it can hold you in place and prevent you from going or being who you need to be or getting to where you need to go. And I want to read some scripture about, I think it's related to a supposition, uh, imagination, and it's in 2 Corinthians 10, 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, and having in a readiness to re revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. You know, there's so much that could be said about just that one little small passage of scriptures, but what I want you to come to realize, an imagination can be a stronghold. It can hold you back. You may not be able to get where you need to be. You may always think about, gosh, why can't I be like these other people that just seem to be running so much faster or they need to be doing this or doing that. And you, you, you may not even realize that there's something that you believe. There's something even though you believe it, there's no evidence for that belief. It's an imagination. But the cool thing is the weapons of our warfare can cast down imaginations. 
and pulling all, you know, anything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So you would need to have the knowledge of God, the word of God, to read the word of God. And then you can start realizing, <clears throat> man, I have imaginations that conflict with the word of God. I got to start dealing with these things. That's the first English word, supposition, that I wanted to go through and just be things for us to consider. Okay. The next thing I want to talk about is paradigm. And just I want to use a brief sentence here. Um, when you change paradigms, you're changing how you think about something. And I, this is a, a worn out example, but I want to use it. At one point in time, people thought it was impossible to run a sub four minute mile. But shortly after one person broke the four minute mile, many other people broke it. So it was a mental barrier, uh, a paradigm. Okay. So in, in just looking at suppositions and paradigms, I want to get us to thinking about what do I have in my mind that might prevent me to hear the next thing that Byron talks about. And I want, I want to say first, I'm going to tell you the definition of a word, and then I'm going to tell you the word. The definition of this word I'm about to say is for you to think differently than you have in the past. It is to think differently after you've gone through an event or heard something. It is to reconsider morally to feel compunction. And compunction is a pricking like, oh gosh, I feel like I need to change how I'm thinking. And that word is repent. It is so amazing how many times we might say the word repent and people think it has to do with something over here. And we always have to use it within the context of the, you know, the sentence of the scripture or whatever. But you can also repent of how you think. You can change the way you think. You may have a subdivision, a, a supposition or an imagination that is holding you back. And it's holding you back. It may be a false doctrine. It may be someone came along to you at an early age and said, you're no good. It may be this, it may be that. It could be huge. But when you put it up against the knowledge of God and you realize what the Lord said, you know, Paul said we are more than conquerors. So if he said we are more than conquerors and you feel like you're not, some imagination has taken over and it's casting doubt on what you know to be the the knowledge of God. If you are having a paradigm and you say, oh, I can't do that. Why? Well, it's humanly impossible to do that. If somebody comes along and do it and say, oh, well, don't go. If somebody did it, it's no longer humanly impossible. It can be done. And the focus that I want to put is in, is in repent. When we realize we need to repent, when we realize the vast difference in how God is and how he thinks and how we think. If we were to repent, we would be drawn. This is my personal testimony, my personal belief and all that stuff. If we really came to repentance and we really realized how <coughs> human we are and all these imaginations and suppositions and paradigms, etc., held us back, we would repent and we would want to know what does God say. I don't want to know what Byron thinks in his mind. I don't want to know what Joe said. I want to know what God thinks. So the the first thing that I think that it would be important for a person to do is to know what God thinks. Cast down any imaginations you may have, things that you I believe that have no evidence and you think there's evidence any paradigms such as they're limiters they they're like a governor a governor on a vehicle is something that if you had a vehicle that could go 120 miles an hour but you work for a company and the company didn't want you to go 125 miles an hour or whatever they wanted you to go 50 they could put a governor or a limiter on that and you would never be able to reach the potential of that vehicle because of this governor. That's a paradigm. Something's holding you back. So 
I just want to submit to you. I want you to, to think and consider, potentially consider your ways. Um, Haggai, I think they, they talked about consider your ways. But just consider, could there be something holding me back? Is there a way in which I need to think differently? And the only way I know of really coming together, coming to understand that, is to um, learn what God said. And when you accept what God said, and then you take what God said, and you compare it to what you said, or you believe, or you've what's held you back, and you realize these things are, they're, they're like holding me back. There's a paradigm. And to, to work on that, and then there's a transition, um, we should be renewing our mind. You know, remo- re- renewing our mind, the spirit of regeneration, the, the, the spirit regenerates us, but also uh, renewing the mind by the washing of water by the word. I, I just said, get in the Bible. I, 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 <clears throat> You'll never realize how much you may have learned along the way that you believe to be fact, but there's no evidence until you get to the word of God and you begin to renew. So the the main deal here is realizing that when, when one comes at you with the word repent, it's not necessarily telling you to repent of a sin and you say, well, I already did that. It's telling you to change how you think, to think differently, to consider, is there a new way I can be looking at that? And the only way I think that is acceptable to look at anything is how God sees it. And in this day and age with so many people teaching wrong, I think the only way you're ever going to know it for sure for yourself is to put your nose into the Bible and read. So the first step in the whole process, I think, of getting ready for this huge end time event that everybody's screaming about and talking about is make sure your mind's right. Make sure it's right. Cast down any imaginations, you know, that may be holding you back. Any governors or paradigms that are just limiting you. Repent. Last night, I got to tell you, you know, I had a dream last night, and, and this is just one of probably 20 or 30 dreams like this. I could fly. I jumped off of a building. I flew, um, I, I flew to an unbelievable distance from that building, just my arms. And then someone said, well, the world record is like 30 seconds of flight, um, you know, un, unassisted or something like that. And I realized I could fly for hours. So I think that what God's saying, you know, you can be caught up on the wings of eagles. Those that wait on the Lord can be caught up. Um, I'm trying to think of the verse. I'm not going to get it right, but you can soar in a, in a figurative sense. And you can soar far beyond what anybody on earth can tell you anybody else has ever done. If you cast down these imaginations, these things that are you believe to be true without evidence. If you cast down these paradigms, these things that people have told you, you can't go, you can't fly any further than that, or are synonymously or, or, or just simultaneously or work on it, repent, learn to think differently. Just because somebody came along and said, you can't do this, doesn't mean right now you can say, you can say um, no, wait a minute. I can do all things through Christ which, who strengthens me. That's the first thing that I wanted to just try to mention is if we're going for a game and we've never played this game like we we need to play it, it's going to take some different thinking. And we got to look at it from how it needs to be looked at. It doesn't need to be looked at how somebody said it needs to be looked at. It needs to be looked at how we need to look at it. And how we need to look at it should line up with the Word of God. And the only way to do that is to learn the Scriptures for ourselves. Thank you.